In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I conduct reloads. Now, the first issue is making sure that your reload is your reload technique is within context. And what my I mean by that is, I prepare for home defense, so I'm going to employ the shotgun in a specific manner, which means that clearing rooms or holding a position and obviously maintaining concealment as much as possible because in the home let's face it most of what you have is just concealment barring like some boards or uh, your two by fours or two by sixes some of those can deflect rounds or even catch some uh, but you cannot guarantee it and you're most likely going to get hit if there is return fire unless the person is just being erratic but typically at close ranges uh, it's whoever is going to get that let out first and more accurately that is going to win the fight so we need to train accordingly now uh, first reload technique that i'm going to talk about is um an emergency reload now the idea is you know i shoot like however many rounds that are necessary uh, such as like you know here i can carry up to eight rounds but Probably seven is more accurate for a lot of people wanting to do the cruiser rider mindset, not to keep one in the chamber. The idea is that it's more safe, but if you keep it in a safe, uh, then it should be more safe, pun intended. Uh, so, anyways, uh, with that said, if you're just wanting to start with the basics of, you know, learning the emergency reload, I have a technique for the KS-7 and the KSG that'll work out pretty nicely i think so anyways i'm going to go ahead and show you what that is it's pretty simple and all it really requires is that once you rack this back and lock it back just like any other you know side ejecting pump action you're just going to grab the shell and you're going to put it in the chamber now the way you do that is a little bit differently here so i'll go ahead and explain you know, once I go ahead and uh, demonstrate first. Okay, as you saw there, what I did was I bounced back after, after shooting. And uh, once I noticed that, I got a click. Now, obviously, a click meant that I intended to shoot. And I went ahead and sought concealment immediately. And it wasn't all that much. It was just enough to where I could see if there was an advancement while I was doing my, my reload. And it's, it's, not, it's not something that everybody will do depending on your environment. You might actually bound back to the end of a hallway if you were uh, very close to a door. You might actually exit out in case, you know, the armed person comes and uh or not comes but just sprays through the wall and walks the rounds uh through the hallway so uh, my way of doing things is a little bit differently at least for this demonstration purpose because the idea is to engage the threat and be on top of them and also there's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of time for things to take effect and uh cause you know extinguination on somebody so uh, that time might have been reached by the time I come around the corner. So that's why I was scanning. Once I got once I got identification on them and I kept my safety off, I was ready. And then I could have engaged. Had my sights on, but I evaluated the target and I made sure that they were down. And they were in this scenario. So the next one I'm going to talk about is the simple top off. And for that, I'm going to load up my saddle again and I'm going to load up my magazine with a few more shots so I can go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here. Now the context here is that basically you've won the fighter, you've got a bit of a lull to keep the beast fed. And that's really what it's going to dictate. You can't be in an active gunfight necessarily unless you're transitioning uh, cover concealment to cover and concealment, um, cover or concealment, and you're taking that time to reload. Now that's something that's possible, however, that's typically like a fallback point that's more you know, out in the bush or, you know, uh, in an active shooting or what have you. But anyways, let me go ahead and load this up and I'll just show you the basic top off and then we'll get into me specifically showing you how I do the different techniques.
Okay, as you saw there, what I did was I pied around, I pied around, and then I saw a little glimpse of the threat. I shot, and then I grabbed some more ground, and I shot again. So, the idea is, after I did that, there was an immediate effect on the threat at some point, and then from there, uh, reflexively, I like to take a little bit of concealment or cover in, in order to help, you know, give me a little bit of time where they actually have to engage me. And that takes some time on their part, right? So, uh, that was reflexive and just being ready, but I decided, okay, they're down. Okay, so I'll just maintain my ground and just grab from the side saddle wherever I can. And so, it was down, boom, then boom, boom, and then I was down, uh, or I was up. So, that's as simple as it is. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get a few more reps and then I'll show you with uh, snap caps how I do this. So let's first start off with uh, talking about what you're most likely to do in a home defense scenario, and that would basically just be topping off, uh, feeding the beast as it were. Now it doesn't require that you feed it all the way, but add in a few more shots, especially if you're down low capacity because the idea that you're just going to shoot one because this thing is so powerful, uh, that's, that's not really proven to be the case all the time. You may have to shoot multiple rounds for multiple attackers, so you need to be prepared with this skill, right? So anyways, topping off is a want to versus a need to. Need to is more the emergency reload, which we'll get into next. But anyways, the method that I used here was very simple. I have snap caps in, so it might choke up a little bit, so pardon me. But basically, boom, and yeah, it choked up a little bit. Didn't want to eject on that one. It's odd. There we go. And see, chokes up a little bit. But anyways, notionally, it it went. So then we notice. Okay, so the threat's down. Put the safety on, and the gun's down, so we can see. And now from here, a slight turn overboard. Grab a couple, or however many we used couple at most I would say if you shot three rounds still just grab two and then go back to the ready and if you feel the need to do one more okay afterwards after you've done just two you always want to snap back to preparedness and give it a second and give give the subject time to react because your your behavior is a reaction to their behavior right or a response to their behavior so that is just topping off. Very simple, right? So now let's talk about the emergency reload. As I said, emergency reload is a need to, not a want to. So it's not really a hobby that you should be sitting there and trying to drill over and over and over again. Uh, you should be shaking up the context and doing it at different doorways, different situations like penetrating a room already, but you have to you know, top off or whatever because the momentum of you having to clear your house may actually require that. Um, maybe chasing a subject who is uh, going towards uh, your family's room or like a child's room, that could be a remote context, um, but you having to actually engage in a gunfight inside your house uh, could also be a context too. So, you uh, need to be prepared for these eventualities, right? We might not always have the law to top off. So, Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that, make sure that I have at least a snap cap to do this demonstration with. So, there we go, and there we go. So, let's see, got one in the chamber, good. 
All right, so the emergency reload's pretty simple. It's just a different technique than the con conventional shotgun because you have to manipulate the ejection rods. So here, boom, and click. We don't get a boom, we get a click. So here, reflexively, I like to break uh, from <clears throat> break from being open and pull back to a cover and immediately chicken wing it to make it more conducive to my my reach and stuff and keeping a smaller profile. Some people may want to go from here and be able to quickly snap to shooting, but I personally don't notice much of a difference. I can easily go from from chicken wing to right here. So anyways, with that said, is I'll eject that or I'll throw the uh, slide action back keeping good peripherals, not staring at your ejection port. There's no reason to, it's so ergonomic. All I do is I cross over, I grab one or two. I typically will grab two. And what you're gonna do here is you're just gonna push these feed rods or ejection rods back. And from there, it's just going to be nice and flimsy, right? So it's gonna bounce back and forth. They're gonna be free to move around as they wish, right? And that's a good thing because that's going to come up here because when you're loading vertically you're going to need something to prevent your shelf from coming out and these things are incredibly reliable at doing that even if you're relatively upside down it seems to always want to kick low as it were so from here you can go to uh, basically a compressed a retention position and be ready to fire and then push it forward slightly as you can see here, I'm not going all the way forward and shouldering it. You can, um, but from here, I'm ready, and then I can stabilize my position, and then I can push out a little bit, rotate, and insert, and then I'm good to go. Alternatively is you can go from here or stay here and then just go up quickly and feed. So that's an option. Now you can do one shell and then just be ready with with the grand a grand old slammer but you can also do two and depending on your technique you might want to reload on the move where chicken winging comes in because you're not going to want to reload from here while you're moving around even though this is more maneuverable not ideal and also this is more control so you can reload from here and keep feeding from here while you have good visibility and control. So, anyways, that's how I reload a KSG and a KS7. Very simple. So, anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments below. And you guys have a good one.